black passport. Choose one. Which one do you like? <laughs> Ajay, you now have two passports a green passport, which is your Ghana passport, and a dark blue one, or should I say black passport, which is a British passport. Which one of these do you like more? Ajay, think carefully, oh! Think carefully before you make your choice. So, Ajay now qualifies to live, work, and study indefinitely in the UK. He can now claim and enjoy public funds. He now has access to indefinite free health care. And also, this passport allows him to be able to travel to over 139 countries visa free and for certain countries as well he is eligible to get visa on arrival just by the mere fact that he has a passport this is a big deal welcome once again to my channel meet my son rj rj was born in july of 2021 unlike the us and canada he was not automatically a british citizen just by the mere fact that he was born here in the uk for those of you who do not know what determines your eligibility for citizenship it's when you were born and your parents circumstances that's what determines so for rj although he has a british birth certificate when he was born he did not qualify as a matter of fact we went to the Ghana High Commission to make him a Ghanaian passport and we applied for dependent visa for him even though he was born here if you were born on or after 1st January 1983 there are two things that can make you eligible to apply for British citizenship I'm going to read that on the website so for those of you who did not know if you rush to come and get birth here your son or your daughter will not get British citizenship automatically you may be able to apply to register as a British citizen if you were born in the UK, it depends on when you were born and your parents' circumstances. If you were born on or after 1st January 1983, you may be eligible either if one, you are under 18, and since your birth, one of your parents became a British citizen or got permission to stay in the UK permanently, or you've lived in the UK until you were 10 or older. If you were born in the UK, these are the two things that make you eligible. For RJ, he qualifies under the very first point because first of all, he was born after 1st January 1983, and he's currently under 18 years old and after his birth one of his parents aka myself got indefinite leave to remain or got permanent residency status in the uk for those of you who've been my, on my channel you realize that last year i shared that i had gotten my indefinite leave to remain here in the uk or my permanent residence in the uk so it was after that date that i got that that rj became eligible to apply i have shared a video on the whole application process if you have not watched it i'll leave it here so you can go and watch and see everything regards to documents and the challenges and everything you need to apply to register as a British citizen. If you are in the UK and then you get indefinite leave to remain, your dependents do not automatically get it unless they were born here. So listen carefully, if you brought your two-year-old from Africa here and then later you've worked here for five years, you get your permanent residency, your two-year-old does not qualify to get a British passport. They should have been born here. The only way they will also be um, eligible is if they also get indefinite leave to remain and then later apply. It is for those who were born here and one parent at least has become permanent resident or they've lived in the UK for 10 years or older. Hope you understand. Today's a very special day, obviously. This is a timeline. So we submitted the online application on 15th of November, 2023. So that was some few days after I got my permanent residency. He did the biometric around the same week. The biometric was done 20th November, 2023. And then around 20th of March, that is exactly four months later, we received what we call the certificate of registration as a British citizen. So the application we made is called application to register a child as a British a citizen i'll leave all the links in the description that is the application we made when we got the certificate that means he is now certified as a british citizen i'll show you a sample of how the certificate looks like on the screen so you have an idea so after we got the certificate then we got an email i'm sure the email was supposed to come before but the email came after and i'm going to read the email to you so you know exactly what it is and this email came just 22nd of march about two days after we got the certificate then we got the email this is what the email says dear rich mom Pepper, which is my son's name and then it says reference number and then it says application for British citizenship for Richmond paper then his date of birth it says I am pleased to tell you that your application for British citizenship has been approved you do not need to attend a citizenship ceremony so there's usually a citizenship ceremony but I think because he's a minor there's no need and then he says you will soon receive your certificate which is the legal evidence that you are a British citizen but at this time the certificate had already come <laughs> it says we will send this to the postal address you provided in your application if this address has changed please let us know as soon as possible using the change of circumstance form here. You should take care of your certificate and you must not change or laminate it. Once you have received your certificate of citizenship, any biometric residence permit you have will no longer be valid and cannot be used as evidence of your status. If you have a BRP card, you should return it for a secure destruction. You may have to pay a penalty of up to £1,000 if you fail to return
treatment and invalid BRP. Your BRP card should be cut in half and posted in a windowless plain envelope to biometric products returns in the list that they address there. If you have any travel documents issued by the Home Office, including a spy document, they should all be returned to the Home Office in the same envelope for official cancellation. You may have to pay a penalty of up to £1,000 if you fail to return an invalid BRP. If you hold a refugee or stateless person status in the UK, you will lose the status once you become a British citizen. And then they said, after you have received your certificate, you can now apply for your British passport. And then there's a link on how to apply. All these links will be in the description. And they also mentioned about dual nationals. It says, if you still have another nationality or a non-British passport, you can find information about dual nationalities here. And then there's Data Protection Act, blah, blah, blah. This is the successful email that we received and then the certificate, right? So now he was now eligible to apply. The application in total was just for the registering as a British citizen. That was over a thousand pounds, like a, let's say 1,200. But the video is there, you can go and have a look. So now we had to apply for a passport and then um, we applied for the passport on the 25th of March. And you know me, I always want things done quickly. And so we did an express, which is supposed to take at least one week. So the application for the passport was around 130 pounds. That's because it's express, we're supposed to take seven days. And then because we did express, our application process was quite different. I realized from other people that have done it. Some people, they just did it online and I think they got it within three weeks. But for us, we did their passport application on the 25th of March. And just three days later, on the 28th of March, we got this parcel. The fact that I know that my son will not need to submit bank statement, pay slips, whatever in his life to go anywhere, to go to most places in the world. He will not need to do all of that paperwork. He doesn't need a visa. All he needs to just buy his ticket and go. It's too good, too good, God. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you who are watching me, if you get your eye allowed first before you give birth in the UK here, you do not need to go through the registration as a British citizen. If you give birth after you have got the ILR, you can automatically apply for the passport, which is just about 130 pound express. But if you give birth before you get your ILR, then you now have to first of all apply for the citizenship certificate and then you apply for the passport. So that means you have to pay the 1,200 plus, if that's the, still the case at the time that you're applying, and then now pay the 130 pound. Okay, so it depends on when you gave birth to the child. Before you got your ILR, you pay more. After your ILR, just the passport application so basically that's that i'm going to open this guys so it came in this envelope and when we did their passport application they did ask us to submit certain documents like the certificate that they initially sent us and his original birth certificate so when they sent this they brought that in as well oh jesus christ oh jesus oh jesus christ And then they came with this as well. It says the document you sent to support your passport application will be returned to you. They have already sent it. It says you must sign your passport immediately. But Ajay is a minor, he cannot sign. Always keep a note of your new passport number and date of issue. So passport number, date of issue, just write it there. And then contact details if it gets damaged, if it gets missing, blah, 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 blah. So this is a passport. It's not black, it's like dark blue. It says British passport. United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at my son. <laughs> look at my son. Oh Jesus. It has this like laminated. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, okay. And then it says here nationality, British citizen. Hey, They said the holder is not required to sign. Obviously he's a minor and it's going to expire. 2029 that's in five years time so we'd have to renew and i'm sure renewal is just easy and it has 30 pages or 35 pages for the standard one but if you're a frequent traveler and then you want more pages you can request for that yeah it has about 33 pages this is amazing guys the fact that my children will not struggle to travel around the world is a lot if you watch my video people are paying 150,000 pounds 150,000 dollars 200,000 dollars just to buy passports of some countries to allow them to travel without a visa and my son just has it because I stayed in the UK longer. Thank you, Jesus. So the main challenge obviously will be the money because imagine if you have two kids and then you have to do this whole application for them, especially if you gave birth to all the two before you got your ILR. I mean, you're looking at close to, let's say 3,000 for the entire application because you gave birth to them before you got your ILR or before one parent got their ILR. But if it's after the passport application, like I said, just a little over a hundred pounds. Another challenge would be the references. When you're applying to register as a British citizen, you need references. And the requirements for the reference is too much. A registered professional British citizen who has engaged in him in a professional level, who has 
is long if you watch my video i'm sure you realize so that will be the challenges of this application process but like i said you always have to be very honest in your application you know they understand and so we're going to celebrate we're going to go to a friend has just opened a japanese or is a korean restaurant and this weekend we're going there to celebrate rj's citizenship obviously because he's a minor who did not attend a citizenship ceremony so we are doing our own family citizenship ceremony in this restaurant japanese or korean restaurant and then just you know to celebrate and to thank god for this amazing opportunity So with regards to Alge's dual citizenship, Alge now has two passports, a valid Ghanaian passport, a valid British passport. And I think having dual nationality is very powerful. Alge can now go to Ghana in future to start a business and he will not be required to pay any foreign person's fee or whatever. He can own properties in Ghana because he is a Ghanaian and he can start businesses in Ghana because he is a Ghanaian. And if he's traveling to Ghana, he may not need a visa if he decides to go with this passport. And he can assess every other benefits that Ghanaians enjoy. The peace, he can go there and he'll sneak away, you know, whenever he wants. And with this as well, he qualifies to travel to so many different countries without needing a visa. He's enjoying free healthcare here. He can claim benefits here. He's got the best of both. He can also work legally in both countries without any issues. He can go to school without paying foreign tuition in both of these countries. And he can inherit properties in both of these countries without any legal issues or without having to pay fines or whatever. That is really good. That's what dual nationality is all about. And I'm happy that we have got this for RJ. And he may not see it now, but he will really appreciate it as he grows up. You know, some of us have struggled. I remember my first visa application to the US when I was denied. Like, I was went mad. I was just so confused. So I'm happy that my son will not have to go through that, you know? Yeah, so let's celebrate. I thank you so much for watching if you have a child here the time will soon come okay you'd also get yours soon and then the blue black passport choose one which one do you like thank you for sharing and celebrating this moment with us bye